Hello guys, today we will discuss about a very important topic which is meningitis. Meningitis uh, is an inflammation of the membranes which cover the brain and the spinal cord. And these membranes have a, some acute condition where there can be the inflammation can be occur. So this type of condition is called the meningitis. These have a two common cause where the some viruses and some type of a bacteria can cause and etiology it is the important because the we can be know the seriousness of the illness and which type of a treatment we should do like a antibiotic and other type of treatment for this condition so we should approach for the etiological now we will discuss about the first etiology which is the viral meningitis in this condition there can be the viral meningitis is usually clear up in a week or the two within the no specific treatment commonly there the rarely serious infection of the fluid in the spinal cord which is the csf fluid and that surround the brain and also called the aseptic meningitis which is associated with the viral meningitis if we talk about the cause of the different type of virus first is the mosquito borne virus and occasionally seen after the strep throat infection it mainly occurred by the throat infection and this can uh, throat infection by the cribri from plate uh, there can be the it can be generated to the meninges of the brain so it can developed by the uh, respiratory route and commonly intestinal virus account for the half of us cases per year and enterovirus have a main etiological cause of the virus if we talk about its a sign and symptoms there can be the usually occur after the exposure uh, more than the 7 week 7 days there can be the patient feel some type of a fever headache stiff of the neck and some type of the tiredness can be seen in the patient and some skin manifestation like rash can be occur and it is the respiratory infection there can be the sore throat can be the likely the symptom and sometime patient can develop the vomiting because of the chemo trigger zone in the brain can be induced in this condition if we talk about its a treatment and the prevention of the viral meningitis there can be the no specific treatment for the viral in meningitis because uh, antibiotic do not work on the virus so we should uh, pay the careful attention to the personal hygiene in this condition and good hand washing help to prevent the spread of the infection and the viruses second type of etiology which is the bacterial meningitis it is a serious infection of the fluid of the spinal cord that surround the brain like a viral infection it can a same etiology but in this condition uh, what is the main difference there can the result of the bacterial invasion of the membrane that cover the brain and the spinal cord so meninges become the swollen and the inflamed leading to the classic of the meningitis in this classical symptom there can be the uh, inflammatory mediators can be work and it can cause the swelling and the inflammation of the meninges meninges have a three types arachnoid pyometer duramater so these meninges have the inflammation if we talk about the which bacteria may cause the meningitis in the human so three more uh, more common bacteria then can cause the meningitis first is the haemophilus influenza which is the type b and second type of a bacteria which is the neisseria meningitis that can cause the meningococcal meningitis and the third type of bacteria which is the streptococcus pneumoniae it's a diplococci bacteria which can cause the pneumococcal meningitis and it is the most common uh, cause of the uh, adult meningitis in the patient which is the streptococcus pneumoniae it have a second name which is the pneumococcus and some uh, other bacteria which cause the neonatal meningitis uh, which is the name of the streptococcus eglectia
it causes the early neonatal meningitis and the late neonatal meningitis to the patient and if we talk about how do group get the bacterial meningitis bacteria are the spread through the direct contact with the secretions and there can be the respiratory route by the throat infected person and none of the bacteria that cause the meningitis are very contagious not spread by the causal contact or by the simply breathing the same air where the person in fact has been if we talk about the bacterial meningitis what is the classical symptom can be occur in a patient when we examine the patient in the if we talk about there can be the patient is the under age 2 there can be the some several type of a symptom like fever headache some type of stiff of neck patient feel inactivity drowsiness there can be the some type of a vomiting and patient don't like to eat some thing and some type of a seizure uh, epilepsy can be developed in a case maybe the hard to the detect in the infant and if we talk about symptom in the over age of the two there can be the high fever headache stiff neck nausea and vomiting there can be the sensitivity to the light confusion can be developed some type of sleeping ness and the pitike that is spread the rapidly pitike mainly developed to the skin lesion and some type of a seizure can be developed if we talk about its a pathophysiology how the bacteria will spread to the body and it can cause the meningitis bacteria can be colonize and penetrate of the nasopharyngeal mucosa membrane so it's a respiratory route uh, by these bacteria can enter to the patient's body and after this survival of bacteria in the blood and transportation via the circulation so it can cause by the systemic circulation can be involved and after this systemic circulation there can be the invasion of the central nervous system can be occur so there can be the multiplication in the subarachnoid space between the uh, after the arachnoid there can be the subarachnoid space there can be the bacteria multiply it can generate its progeny and after this multiplication there can be the increase in the permeability of the blood brain barrier blood brain barrier normally in our body to resist the some type of infection but in this condition meningitis there can be the bacteria can be spread through this blood brain barrier and after the trans endothelial migration of the granulocyte and the monocyte that can be release of the cytokine and some type of a prostaglandin and prostaglandin activity can be increased by the cyclooxygenase enzyme and after this there can be the leakage of the plasma protein uh, uh, in the brain meninges there can be the developed of the cerebral edema and increase of the intracranial pressure and some type of a impairment of the circulation so this type of a, in this condition after the releasing of the cytokine there can be the inflammatory processes can be induced so this type of a condition there can be associated with the uh, release of the prostaglandin and the cytokine which are the main mediator of the inflammation in the viral uh, meningitis there can be the myer viral meningitis also have a same type of feature if you know there can be the uh, viral is the a cellular organism in this condition uh, first uh, can be seen the enterovirus and the some type of a mumps virus then can be the by the inhalation route and there can be the by the oral fecal route they can enter through the body and by the there can be the uh, this type of virus when go to the systemic circulation so systemic circulation their count will be increased so in this condition viral present in the blood circulation this condition is called the viremia so this type of a viremia is the first primary exposure to the virus so this condition can be called as a primary infection after the primary exposure uh, to the virus there can be the secondary infection can uh, be occur by the this systemic circulation Uh, this virus through the blood it can reach to, reach to the different organ a different type of a tissue to the our body so there can be the lymphoid tissue infection 
and choroid plexus infection, infection of the peripheral sensory neural pathway. So in this condition, there can be the different neuron, different pathway. It can cause the second infection. After the uh, this type of infection, it can be increased in the blood-brain barrier permeability. So there can be the activation of the interleukin and the immune cell and it can uh, cause to the uh, entry of this type of a virus. If we talk about its a diagnosis and the treatment, diagnosis can be uh, done in the patient by the lumbar puncture and this for the checkout for the bacteria growth in the spinal fluid, we should measure by the lumbar puncture, we take a fluid and patient send this uh, this type of fluid to the laboratory to examine microscopically examine after the microscopic examine uh, we see the type of a bacteria uh, or the virus there can be the cause the meningitis so uh, after the diagnosis we can be uh, confirmatory go for the treatment and antibiotic administration based on the bacteria found in this condition if we found the bacteria we should uh, go through the antibiotic and close contact identification and treatment is also needed because some type of a complication can be developed. So patient should close contact by giving the this type of a drug and early diagnosis and treatment it can be important because some type of a, if the severe inflammation can be occur in the meningitis there can be the some type of a complication can develop and it, it can cause the mortality to the patient. If we talk about the, it's a what type of a complication we see in the advanced bacterial meningitis can lead to the brain damage and some type of a coma and death can be occur. In the survivors can suffer from the long term hearing loss, mental retardation, some type of a paralysis and epilepsy can be occur in the patient. After the treatment, we can be give the some type of a vaccination to the patient. So in this condition, a type of a pe uh, vaccine, which is the hip vaccine. In this condition, hip vaccine can be give the three doses and there can be the by the six month of the age. And after these, we have to give a booster dose between the 12 to 18 month of the age. So these vaccine can be give for the uh, early prevention or the preventing the neonate from the future development of the meningitis. So in the meningococcal vaccine not routinely give to the civilians in the US because most outbreak occur in the Africa. That's why we did not prefer. If we talk about the pneumococcal vaccine there can be the uh, against the pneumococcus bacteria. So it is ineffective in the person under the two age. And it can be recommended for the old person over the age of 65 with certain medical problem. And there can be the some travel precaution we can be see like the check your local health department if you are planning to tra travel outside the country. So if meningitis vaccine is recommended or required it should be received at least one week before the departure it, if the possible. Thank you very much.